So now that you've done trading with Monty right now, it is getting to be evening. Uh, Monty uh, goes back to check on the little pixie again and comes, you know, and he looks pretty grave uh, as you gather around him and he says, oh, it won't be long now. No so issue. as the sun is going down, Monty begins smoking and uh, um, he's he's silent unless you want to ask him a question or talk about something else while you all wait. So you got any questions for Monty? I'm trying to soothe the pixie into her passing. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I've made some tea and I am giving her little sips. What um what can Monty tell us about the uh, the mages and wilder mage? You know what, Monty has a confession to make. I've been a wilder now in this world for decades, and I've never made it to wilder mage. Hmm. All I can tell you is what I've heard about wilder mage, but I've never actually been there. It's not an easy place to 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 get to, <laughs> even if you're a wilder, and it's made to be that way. There's a reason why the wilders. Uh, become quite reclusive they, besides the fact that they're generally not well accepted around the world uh, they they want to have their own community so they've withdrawn they've set up all kinds of wards in the great northern forest the closer you get the harder it is to actually get to wilder mage unless you deserve to be there mm. which means that if you're not a wilder you're not going to make it to Wilder Mage oh, hardly under any circumstances. They're also not that far off of the Aesir Vikings, you know. The Wilder Mage, if you look, and uh, Monty pulls out a map, he hits the J key on the screen, <laughs> and he goes to the map. Monty pulls out a map, you know, and he goes on up to Wilder Mage, and he points out that the Wilder Mage is only, who knows how many Still leagues driving. from the Aesir Mountains. I am. Is it not showing? Oh, did I hit the wrong thing? No, let me try again. So here we are. This is the Great Northern Forest. Here are the Plains of the Fallen. Here's Wilder Mage. And here are the Aesir Mountains with the Viking Slavers. And what do you think the Viking Slavers do with the Wilder Mage? Probably enslave them. They stay as far away as they can because I'll tell you, there are not many things an Aesir Viking is afraid of in Ooh. this world, but the Wilder, Wilder Mage Wilders, they're afraid of them. Mm. Giants are afraid of us Wilders. It's an entire settlement I would of, of powerful magic Santiago. users. Mm. Mm. Probably Santiago that they're afraid of. No, no, no. Isn't Santiago down in Florida? He's saying that the uh, he's that they Norlands. are afraid Norlands. of the, the the wilders who live in and inhabit Wilder Mage. Yes, because um, there are several magicians. Yes, for the example, mages. Mages, yes. Yeah. The most powerful being Santiago. Yes, but, but he's not anywhere he's near not that. Not he's not, I, as far as I know. The, the Wilders at Wildermage have not got a lot of interest in St. Diago, and St. Diago hasn't got a lot of interest in them. The Aesir Vikings, on the other hand, they don't have as much interest in either group because they tend not to interact with one they stay far away from in the Great Northern Forest. They have to go around it if they're going to go hunting the, the wind wolves that are north of the Wildermage. And they don't get as far south as the Blood Coast normally ever. Most of their focus is on their raiding and hunting, which is across all of the mid part of the continent, from the Aesir Mountains all the way to the Feywood. And most of their raiding concerns the Anu cities. That's what they're most interested in. They're in a forever war with the Anu, you know. So, that's what uh, Monty knows about Wildermage in the Acer Mountains. Um, incredible cultural lesson. Thank you, Monty. Can you suggest where there'd be another trading post that would be of interest to us? 
a trading post? Eh, that's a good question. Let's look at the map again. And once again, Monty refers to the map and he starts to uh, point out and he's like, of course, you know, the closest place from where we are. And right here, he puts his finger right on where he figures you are, which is right here, just south of this marker, which says new marker, which should actually be yeah, the uh, marker for Verdantis portal. So if we're just south of Verdantis portal here, all you need to do is head straight west. Chahokia is right there. Ah. Now, granted, that's a good two two weeks travel, but Chahokia is the biggest settlement in in all. Uh, Chahokia and Elfame are, are the two biggest settlements in this entire area, by far. Chahokia is more than a village. Chahokia is a, almost a small city. I think our initial objective is to get to Elfame. Now, if you want to do other trading, you're going to have to move either up far to the northwest. You're going to have to get up into this country that's way, I mean, in the northeast. You're going to have to get up into this country that's way up here near the East Town Ruin. If you go down south of the East Town Ruin, this here is Orc Country. Hmm. Yeah. And you can trade with the orcs if you run across the right ones. Not that there's many that are traders, you understand. You need to you need to have the blessing of their war chief to pass through their lands. Otherwise they're just as like to rob you and kill you. I wouldn't suggest going anywhere near the Unta territories unless you've got a good reason to be there. Otherwise you're fighting certain serpent people left, right, and center. Though there may be some important quests up there in the Ukta territories. And uh, if you were to go up and around the Feywood to the coast, here on the coast, I believe there are some coaster villages right on the east coast. Most of these villages rely on shoreline for their fishing and trade that might be coming across uh, the Sea of Atlantis so that uh, they can trade with those from the eastern lands. And apart from that, you might find an occasional trader like myself or a caravan wandering. You always have a possibility that you're going to run into dwarves someplace. Like in a random cave blending with the walls. Well, those would be core dwarves you're talking about, but I'd be talking about the surface dwarves now. Most of the time, Corridors don't want to have nothing to do with anybody, and they go in the secret and dark of the night with their big caravans. They don't want to fall off the top of the earth. Trying to stay <laughs> undercover as much as they can, even if it's the cover of darkness. Yeah. But there are surface dwarfs, and they're, they're a lot that will, are primarily traders and tinkers. Now, there are one other group of dwarfs we haven't talked about, and you've got to steer clear of them, for they are the renegade Corridors. The Dwergar. And once in a while, you'll run into a bad of these evilins, the Dwergar. How do you spell Dwergar? D U E R G A R. Some might call them fallen dwarves or dark dwarves, but really they're renegade dwarves who have abandoned the tenants of the Undercore. And now they live mostly for their own renegade purposes. They even have clans. There's so many of them. Hmm. When we are out traveling, what things are most valuable do you think we should be collecting? Well, it depends on what you've found for things that you can make and craft as far as collecting, if you're talking about gathering things from the wilds. Um, apart from that... Uh, I think quests are one of the most important things that you'll want to focus on now. From what I understand it, you're headed to see the Fae Queen. Is that right? That's our current goal. So you'll be heading, continuing on this road that heads southeast. It'll eventually take you 
to the river. And you can see this map on the river right here that borders the Feywood. Now, as I said before, there's a magical barrier that runs along that water course. And to get across that magical barrier, you can only do it at one of the bridges. And those bridges is guarded. So you're going to have to find your way across those bridges the right way. Because trying to find them across the wrong way is going to end you up dead. Mm. Can you suggest what the right way could be? Well, every bridge is different, you know. You're dealing with the Fae. So that means it's tricksy. Of course, if you happen upon a troll bridge, and you know, they're trolls sometimes when it comes to bridges across the river, they're like beavers. They build them bridges and then they, they charge a troll toll. That's what trolls is all about. They'll allow you to use the bridge they make for, it's a hefty fee, but it's not unreasonable. So if you find a troll toll bridge, you might be able to use one of those. Any suggestions where the closest troll toll bridge Well, I don't be? know. As like I say, they're a bit itinerant. They tend to get bored with where they've got their bridge and they tear it down and throw the stuff away. And then they move along somewhere else and build another bridge. Somewhere where they think they might get passerbys that they can earn a coin or two from. Hmm. Not all trolls is bad. You know, there's good trolls and bad trolls. Hmm. I don't think you're going to find much of a good cave troll in the world. And forest trolls, them be the big two-headed ones. You never know really which way they're going to go. But there are friendly trolls in the Feywood that you can speak with. How would we know? Well, if they ain't trying to kill you, you're probably okay. <laughs> okay. Sage advice. Obvious question. <laughs> But most of the time, a bridge troll isn't going to go after you unless you make him angry by not not willing to make a deal with him. Forest troll, they got their own reasons, and maybe some of them will want something from you. Maybe some of them will just ignore you. Cave trolls is bad through and through, and they'll attack you no matter what. Hmm. Yep, we had experience with them. Okay. Any other questions? No, nope. you're still vigiling. Well, as you are vigiling, it turns out that the next time Monty goes to examine her, he cannot find a pulse. And she has passed away. May I just have a camera on me for a second? Uh, yes, I will put three. I'll put Josephine on. Here, I'll give you guys back the controls now. Rob painted this. This is in a memorandum of our sweet nymph. So we're going to, oh, we'll put her on display. <laughs> yeah. There we go. So all of the wilders take their hats off. Monty takes his hat off too. What? And everyone bows their head in a memory of the beautiful little pixie named Nell Uthel, a loyal servant of her queen. And you all bear her body all the way up and over to the funeral pyre. Which we've got over here. Actually, Thaddeus and Percy are over here at the funeral pyre. Because I saw it. I, I moved to it. Yeah. Okay, let me know and I can do a, um, a fire spell a when you're ready. fire bottle. Yep. I won't do a fireball. It's a little. Well, uh, all the ambitious. wood has been stacked up. Can you and... move the map on? on... Oh, yeah. On... Let's move this big map so we Get can see there. it on here. Yeah. All right. There we are. And we'll just uh, put it like Get this. On. Put your figures around and we'll bear witness. And... Are the flowers stacked up in the middle there? Is that her? So she is laying there. This is as close as I can zoom in. That, that was her. her. Yeah. Okay. So where's the pyre? Oh, she's on the pyre. She's oh. on the pyre. You can see her. on the screen behind me a little bit closer view if you need to understand. Yeah. So you guys might want to move. Okay. Well, we shall lay her to rest and I shall cast 
um, a spell of um, of produce flame at the pyre to get it ignited. Okay, as you cast the spell of produce flame, the pyre begins to burn. And everyone is silent. Just as the pyre begins to burn, uh, all of a sudden you see a little streak shooting up into the sky with a little bit of sparkle. And Monty looks up and goes, there she goes. Back to the east. Well, what time is it? Now you mean in the game what time in it is? In the game, yes. Right now, uh, evening has set, and I'm going to say that it is probably 9.30 p.m. The stars are just peeking out as the as the last of twilight is descending behind the western mountain, western plains. Was there any trees. essence left of the uh, fairy in the pyre that we could take to the queen? Well, we have the, uh, we have the mirror. Mirror. Mm-hmm. And we, we, we yeah. have our other possessions of hers. I don't know. Monty says, I'll tell you what, I'll write you, I'll write you a little uh, missive to the queen and she'll know it's from me, though I would be surprised if she doesn't already know about you and what's going on. There's not much, the the fake queen knows everything about what happens within her borders and not much misses her sight that's around the borders. Even though you might not be able to see them, you know, there are lots of little creatures that, uh, that. I wouldn't call them spies as much as I would guardians mm. who report to her to let her know what the goings are to the west, to the east, to the north. And it used to be to the south, but most of that's been destroyed. That's where all of the battle lines are. You know, that's where the far vast majority of all the elves are now, too. This is something you should keep in mind as you enter the Feywood. I don't know how what you'll expect to find as far as folk go, but you may not find certainly hardly any elven folk, for they're all defending the borders. But you may find some of the fey folk that are still about, especially the wildest of the fey. And remember, not everything in the fey is safe. In the fey wood, there are fey that live there that will certainly be hostile to a wilder such as yourself. And they might simply be because they, it's simply who they are, even though they're fey. It doesn't mean that they're evil, but it does mean that they prey upon others as part of the circle of life. The reason that they're there, the reason that they even congregate to that place, of course, is because of Elfame. They need to be close to the magic of the, the one of the last living world trees. For that's why you see it on your map as a great green tree, because that is the tree of Elfame. Right, so it's important to have, I think, that note just in case we get questioned. Yes. 360 view, Glenn. Do we have a... the era world map so they can see the map of where the tree of Elfame? I can put it back up on the journal if you wish. We'll put it back up on the screen. We'll zoom right in oh, there on the is. adventure map. And as you can see... The illustration that's on the map in the middle of the Feywood is a great green tree with a few dwellings below it. So it's basically just a tree of life that's thriving and keeping the Fey community and in, it's about, in lively, livelihood. And it's about a two-week journey, is that what we understand? I found one of the wee Fey creatures. He happens to have wandered by... He's a little woolly Watsamakuzits. <laughs> and he wants to say hi because he's been ignored too much. His name is Simon. Hello there, woolly boy. Hello, Mr. Simon Elf. Maybe he... you can make him an animal companion. <laughs> <laughs> he is the shyest of the Fae. He runs away until you're busy doing something at your laptop. And then he comes and bugs you and bugs you and bugs you. Especially if your name is Dave Wildson. <laughs> right? He uh, is due to have his hair cut on Friday. 
And all this stuff is going to go away. You've got to be all cleaned up again, aren't you, Mr. Wooly? And then he'll look so different than he does right he now. He looks yeah. like a rat then. Yeah. We can't go more than five weeks without giving this dog uh, a cut. Because that's how fast his hair grows. It's crazy. He's a big floofer. He really is, aren't you? Mm. Yeah, he's okay. he's he's only like six pounds, but with the fur, he well, looks like twenty pounds. Yeah, it may be several weeks, but we also have a mammoth that we can ride. Well, perhaps we right. Should um, actually, didn't last week our friends do some math for us, mm. and we've been conjuring a mammoth. Um, I'm sure in the period of time that our Faye has passed and we've cremated her, the mammoth I'm sure is should quite be ready to ready to go. Yeah. Well, Monty suggests I'll tell you what. Now it's time for us to sit and finish our smoking and let the night pass and let the fire die down and finish its job of consuming what's left of our wee little pixie girl. So come, come back to the fire. Let let the pyre burn by itself until it burns itself out. And I'll tell you another tale of Aaron. Wonderful. For you're new here and you probably don't know hardly nothing about this land. I've been here walking these uh, these lands, both eastern and western now, for, oh, it's got to be a good 200 years, don't you know? Well, how have you lived so long? Well, you're going to find out yourself. You're a wilder. Well, time doesn't work the same. You know, even all the Aarons themselves, the folks who live in Era, they're long lived. Immortals themselves and the Fae are immortal. Is that how you know my grandmother since she would have been of that time period as well? Well, it hasn't been 200 years since, since I met and saw your grandmother. Here in this world, it's probably been more like 50 years maybe maybe even a little less i know it was just at the right at the start of the troubles the wars it was just in the in the first 10 years that uh the death of maria kingway happened i don't have a perfect memory for everything but i do like to keep the stories alive if i can so let me think of what I can tell you that would be of use to you. For there are many, many stories here in this world that you are not going to be a part of and you're not going to run into. All of the lore I could tell you, it's not going to do you much good. I told you about Erangath because I wanted you to know about the Fae Queen. And of course, you're going to hear people refer, if you get into the Fae Wood, of course, you're going to hear people refer to the Queen's Consort. And where he's gone. Why don't I tell you the story? I'll tell you part of the story of the High Hob. That's what I'll tell you. I'll tell you the story of Moraz. So last time we talked, I referred to the Isles. And you know, I said that Huldra has taken over and completely controls pretty much all of the British Isles. But the isle to the west of the British Isle, the beautiful isle, the green emerald isle, the original home of the wee folk, that is no longer a place that any living thing can safely be. For it is a cursed isle of gloom and darkness and endless spirit battles. Which, sorry, which island is this? This would be the isle to the west of uh, the British uh, Britain. So Ireland. 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 Oh, yes. okay. So the Emerald not, Isle. Not local to this North America. Okay. Got it. Well, no, because, you know, I don't come from around here, do I? I was talking about Huldra. And I was going to tell you about the High Hob. For the High Hob, you might run into him and you might see him. His name is Moraz. And I don't know if he'll have much to do with you, but you should understand that he's the only hob left. For there was a great battle, a great civil war amongst the wee folk caused by two leprechaun brothers. I think I mentioned before that Haldra, she had uh, 
taken away and resurrected a wee dead twin baby leprechaun boy. Raised him to be evil, and his name is Gwildenai. Well, as the other, his brother, ascended to the throne, he returned, and there was a great war, a civil war, between the wee folk. And in that battle, the rightful brother to the throne, whose name escapes me, oh, I'm getting old, his name escapes me. Why is it you remember the bad ones, but sometimes you can't remember the good ones' names? Well, he fell in battle. Gwildenai was successful. And you could say that the forces of Haldra looked like they were going to win the battle for the Emerald Isle and the Wee Folk. The forces of evil were winning over the forces of good until one last great sacrifice was made. And that was made by the rightful king, the leprechaun prince, the good brother. For he distracted Gwildenai long enough for the high hob to gather the hobs together. Do you know what a hob is? You have no idea, do you? A hob is a spirit of the fireplace. They look like little brown gnomes to you, maybe, but... They've got powers you can't imagine, especially the high hog. And so they gathered all the powers at once and they funneled them to Maraz. All the hobs working together. And when Maraz cast his spell, it killed him. All of them. One standard left on the battlefield. Greatest fire spell ever cast. Well, did I was burned, mind you, burned. They say half his body is consumed nearly. If it had not been Huldra magicking him away, he'd be dead today. Somehow, with her dark arts, she managed to preserve him. And so her forces lost the battle. And the wee folk, the good wee folk, they were victorious. But the hobs were dead. All but Maraz. He is the queen's number one advisor now. You know, the wee folk, they had nowhere to go after that. They could not remain on the isle, so burnt and destroyed and cursed it was by the battle. If it had not been for the fey queen sending her own elven forces across, across the sky of the Sea of Atlantis to save them and bring them to the western lands. They never would have survived. It's such a sad tale. And so it was that Miraz survived the battle and it is his greatest curse that he lives on the only hob left. You can see it in his eyes. Hard they are. He carries this terrible burden of honoring his dead brothers. That's why we'll deny in Heldra. Someday they must be dealt with. But for you, when you go to see the Feywood, Understand that all these wee folk are refugees. It was the Elfwood before the Fey came. Why do you think it's called Elfheim and not Feyheim? It was the Elfwood before the Queen of the Elves became the Queen of all Fey, saved the lost Fey fleeing the Cursed Isle, bringing them to the Western Lands. 
And of course, every one of them that survived remembers it well. And they make songs now. They sing little songs of the high hob. But so you know, if you see Maraz, treat him with great respect, for he deserves it. He saved the eastern lands, at least for the time being. And I know now he works with and for the Fay Queen. I know they work planning what they can do to defend against the relentless forces that even now have crossed the ocean coming after the Queen's little girls here in the Western Lands. There may even be spies still in the Feywood, though I think you're not going to find many there that would be at all sympathetic to the evils of Haldra. For the most part, they're all simple folk. They're magical, naturally magical, fantastical creatures, as you will see. Another warning to you, don't even try and make a fire in the Feywood. There is no such thing as fire in the Feywood. A Fey Queen would never allow it. You'll be able to forage there easily. Fish there too. But as far as woodcraft and as far as firecraft goes, there's no place for that in the Feywood. We can't make a cooking fire during the day? <laughs> you can't make a cooking fire at all. Okay. You can't make a flame. Okay. The only thing that could make a flame in the Feywood would be a natural fire creature like the Hob himself. So we're allowed to eat fish, but they must be raw. <laughs> Sushi. How how many um, how long ago was this terrible battle? Oh, it would be three hundred years ago now. If my reckoning is right, three. I think three. It's hard for me to keep track. But you know, yeah, three, 300 years ago now. So from the pyre or the, the spire that we came down, there was a, a large amount of the forest was burned. Can you tell us, a, do you know why it was burned? How did that happen? Well, I know you say that this was the <clears throat> Celestia's Vale spire, right? You see, Celestia's Vale sits right on the borderlands. To north of it, the Feywood begins. To the south of it is just outlaying lands, the forest that's still between Feywood and what is to the south. But the Pixies have been moving outside that land, and they've been making small settlements there for now for, for many decades, a century, more than a century. And that's what you'll have run into. You've been into those set it pixie settlements that were just that far south, just outside the natural magical barriers of the Feywood. And that's as how far that uh, Yago's armies have encroached and they're trying to burn it out. Mm. I suppose they think they could burn all the way into the Feywood. But if you had moved north of that pinnacle, you would have run smack dab right into the entire host of the Elvish army. For that's where their main camp is. And I don't know that they would be at all happy to see a group of wilders a coming along like that. They have greater things to worry about than that. It's best that you came this way, coming north to talk to the Fae Queen, <clears throat> if you can even get to her. I'm sure you can, as long as you mind your manners on your way to Elfhane. Well, there's a tale for you, and no mistake. Thank you for sharing these words with us. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Information is invaluable. Appreciate all of your insight. And I'm sorry for... The loss of your friends. Well, Monty says. You know, I think it's time I smoked by myself now. 
if you don't mind, I'm going to go and sit by the river. And Bonnie gets up and he walks over off by himself to the stream. And you can see him in the distance sitting as a little dark figure beside the stream. Uh, further to the south. And uh, you see the little light of his pipe as smoke wafts up into the air. And he stares off into it. And it seems to you that as I, as he's thinking, every once in a while you can see some kind of little image appear in the smoke as he's staring off into the smoke. As though his very thoughts are being reflected and created by the smoke wafting around his head. And um, that is the end of Monty's stories for tonight. What about you guys? What do you want to do? You want to go down, Simon Dog? I think it's time you went down. I want to be sleep for the night and craft mm -hmm. and gather and do resting things, in my opinion. And watch. Yes, and like take a few minutes because we just had um a lot happen over the past week or so well several weeks but uh, but especially now that we had had a um an innocent die in our arms basically i think it's been really heartbreaking for all of us um so i say we take some time to rest okay so uh, by the time Monty finishes all of his stories, it's almost midnight now that he has talked until this time in the game. And uh, as you all go to bed, uh, you see him sitting uh, not, not far down, down by his tent. Between his tent and the stream is where Monty is sitting. And uh, he uh, sits there in solitude for the rest of the night keeping his own little vigil while you guys um uh, have a sleep do you want to set any watches i'll take the first one okay so I'll thaddeus is going to take first watch we'll do three watches like normal so uh, as everybody else beds down thaddeus remains asleep sitting up watching 14 and throughout the night uh the only thing that thaddeus sees or hears is just the wind in the moonlight because uh nothing else is coming the fire continues to burn and it is now burning down and it's mm -hmm. just a pa a pile and ash of of red coals yeah but i'm keeping an eye that's on that, all that it that's left of it because of the wind and um yes and and every once in a while you look over and you see uh Monty is still there where he was. He's unmoving, but you can tell that he's awake because he's continuing to smoke. And every once in a while, you'll see a little flare from the top of his pipe as he draws smoke. And uh, you see a little bit of the flare of the firelight. You end your thing with nothing, uh, and you rouse the next person, which is Percy. Yep. Percy gets up, 17. and he rolls a 17. On Percy's watch, uh, the only thing that happens is that uh, you see a fox pick its way along the opposite bank and uh, stop to regard the fire, stop to regard you, stop to regard Monty, and uh, then it turns and it uh, walks back into the forest.